Good evening, fans, and welcome to Hockey by Northwest, where we talk about the only teams that matter to you, the Edmonton Oilers, Calgary Flames, Winnipeg Jets, and Vancouver Canucks. I'm your host, Brendan Monroe, and with me tonight is Sean Miller. Good evening, everyone. So we're going to do our little preview on the Calgary Flames tonight. Calgary's been a busy team in the offseason. They, of course, unloaded defenseman Robin Regeer, and recently they also moved forward Damon Lankow. So let's take a look, starting on their defense. Sean, tell me a little bit more about what you see the Flames defense looking like without Robin Regeer. Well, I just don't know. I, I think uh, most Flames fans would agree. It's really hard to say. We got Mark Giordano, who I think was a tremendous find to bring a guy like that over from Europe. To see him put up 43 points last year. He's a really solid player, and I, you know, and I, I think everyone can respect the way he plays. He's hungry for the puck. You can just see it in his eyes. He's right in the middle of the scrums all the time. He's going after the puck. Um, Jay Bowmeister has more talent, more physical tools than Mark Giordano, but he doesn't seem to have that engine. But still, he's a tremendous player as far as being the quiet second, you know, number two piece, I think, on any team's blue line. I've worried a bit about his contract, but you know what? Maybe if you don't notice him too much, he was doing a pretty good job. Beyond that, they have a few standouts still. Um, Bab- Anton Babchuk was pretty solid last year with a plus 18, leading the team in that category. And I think that's pretty impressive for a fairly young defenseman. And they also have Corey Sarich, another guy who eats up a lot of tough minutes and was plus 11 last year. Neither of them are big point producers. But I think between those four guys, they have a pretty solid defense. And I think in Northeast or Northwest Division, they're certainly going to have one of the stronger defenses. Um, beyond those four, I think that's where you're going to see some weaknesses. Without Regu there, they don't have a lot. It's amazing um, think, how much their defense has changed from this dream lineup that they had a couple of years ago where they had the big three with Bo Meester, Regu, and Fanuf, and two of those three are gone. Maybe the attitudes were too big. Maybe there wasn't enough ice time. Maybe it just didn't click. But the defense is much, much different, and it's going to be a matter of spreading those minutes around do they have experience on defense? Sure. They don't have that standout trio, certainly, like they used to. Um, but I think the Flames' defense is a little bit understated. Maybe that's the right word. It's it's a wild card, for sure. They have enough experience to make it through the season, but I think it's going to cost them on a few nights that they don't have a, a real go-to top four. But they have decent top six. And then beyond that, it's a total fall-off. You have one or two injuries on that defensive court. It could be a really long season. Well, that's mean. If, if a guy like uh, Chief Obisher goes down to injury at any point this season, where are those 28 minutes going to go? Uh, Mickelson? Hey, Mickelson's a talented, for- uh-huh. or a talented defenseman. Um, I think his sister might be a better hockey player. She's got a gold medal hanging around her neck after the uh, Olympics in Vancouver. But, yeah, the, where, where's, where's, the, where's the depth? And then I guess the next thing to look at is the forward situation. Is there... A depth question, depth issue in your mind in terms of the Calgary forward, Flames forwards? Um, I think so. I think uh, you can kind of see that in, you know, the drop in production. I mean, I'm glad they brought Alex Stan get back in. I mean, I questioned the move a little bit at the time, but he connects with Joe McGinley. He put up 69 points last year in a comeback season. And, I mean, he got a little bit long and a little bit too much money, I think, in the contract, but that's the nature of the game in today's NHL. you got to overpay a little bit. Um, 69 points is nothing to sneeze at. Joe McGinley still put up 43 and 43. I mean, that puts him in the top five goal scorers in the league again. Consistency. Uh, consistency, absolutely. He's a leader. He's a great captain. Um, I think it's beyond that where you see real problems. And I think where the Flames are going to get exposed is um, Alex Tangy and Joe McGinley, the best, you know, the number one and two forwards were zero on the plus minus. Um, when your best two most point producing players are plus minus of even, that's not a good sign. Well, they never have to play. They never have to play against the top offensive line. They're out there to score goals. Uh, they're supposed to get soft minutes and plus, pump up that plus minus. Check out the plus minus of any leading player on any other team. It's going to be quite inflated. Uh, if you look at the second line, that Ole Jokin and Rene Bork um, kind of pairing. You look at two guys who were in the Arctic Circle. They were going for the Green Jacket last year, both at a minus seventeen respectively. Team worst. You almost forget how incredibly potent Ole Jokinen was as a scorer only four or five years ago. And for as many seasons as he's played in Calgary, never managed to become a threat. And yeah. is, is Backlund going to be a threat? I don't see that. Is Lee Stepniak, recently acquired in exchange for Damon Lankow, going to be a threat? He'll, he'll, score tw- he'll score 20 goals. We know he's going to score 20 goals. He always does. It might take him... 80 games to score 20 goals. It might take him 16 games to score 20 goals, but that's probably about where he'll finish. Um, 
you know, I, and I, I was going to say, like, Stepniak, I think, that was a good trade. They took an asset that they didn't get to use last year because of that horrible neck injury, and they moved it into something that may help them because they did need more scoring. Um, Ole Jokin was third on the team in scoring. I mean, he had a pretty good year for points with 54. But he had an 8.2 shooting percentage. Let's talk about That's injuries. Let's talk about injuries and specifically somebody's brain injury in the Calgary Flames head office when they decided to release the Iggy Dance. And I'm not sure if everyone out there is familiar with it. We'll put a link up on our site. We thought it was a joke. We thought it was a really bad internet video that some kid had made. But it's a flash animation. It's Iggy dancing. And apparently they are going to play this terrible animation every time Iggy scores. It kind of stands in for the struggles that the organization has gone through in recent times, wouldn't you say, Sean? Oh, absolutely. When I first saw it, I, I, my reaction was, this has got to be a joke. Then you looked, I looked at the address bar and said, flames.nhl.com? Wait a second, this isn't a joke. This is on their own website. Surely it must just be a mock. It must be some kind of inside joke that they're playing on the fans. They're not actually going to put something that's almost offensive up every time they score at the saddle belt. But yet, they are. I think, terrible. I think it could be offensive. I'm not going to choose to interpret it along racial lines, but if you did, I'm pretty sure you can find that video offensive pretty quickly. And there will be people no. who do find it offensive. But, oh, absolutely. I think I mean, the, even the tune that goes on in the background, it, it's not a song that makes you want to get up and dance. So that's the point. Is that get, Joe McGill will score. Let's all get up and dance and celebrate. Well, that song leaves something to be desired. It's like, you're, like a cheap dance club in the late 1970s. And you build a lot of pants and get uh, doing a little bit grooving, just about it. Um, Maybe the Flames should focus less on scoring then and uh, focus more on keeping pucks <laughs> out of their own net. So let's talk about Mika yeah. Kiprasov and what he can bring to this team coming this season. He used to be the best goalie in the NHL. There was no doubt about that. Uh, we had this argument a while ago. Broder, Kiprasov, who would you prefer to have your te- on your team in the playoffs? Um, and there was a time that Kiprasov may have won that argument. But, I mean, today we know that... Kiprasov probably not going to win you a cup. And the question becomes, can he even get you through the full regular season and win you games? We saw him work half a year last year. Do you think he'll pull off a full season this year? Well, I think he's going to have to. If anything, he's proved that he's durable. I think the biggest and most alarming feature of his career can be summed up in this. Um, his goals against average from the past number of seasons, 1.69, 2.07, 2.46, 2.69, 2.47, 2.48. Seems to be a definitive pattern there. Let's see if we can stretch that out to a save percentage. 933, 923, 917, 906, 903, 906. I think there is a pattern there. Um, his 906 save percentage last season um, put him 48th in the league among goaltenders who played 10 or more games. 48th. That isn't even NHL caliber. Sean, I think Um, what we should do is we should try to grow our view count on our video, on our podcast, by the same rate that Kiprasov is growing his goals against average. Because if we did that, we'd have a pretty big audience pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. It's it's, it's definitely, there's a a trend there. Um, Like I said, it's just shocking. I didn't think it was that low. I knew it had gone down a bit, but I really didn't think that it had gone down that much. Um, For Flames fans, you have to wonder... They're still paying a big bucks, and they're a team that's declining. Why not move this guy? Well, everyone still thinks he's worth trading for. Um, you look at guys like Corey Crawford um, and other goalies around the league, those cheap goaltenders their teams have been picking up on, they're running 920 save percentages. Who would you rather have numbers than Mika Kiprasov for nothing? Who would you rather have on your team? Would you take Mika Kiprasov as your starting goalie, or would you be comfortable handing over the reins to a Corey Schneider at a fifth the price? Absolutely. I'd take Corey Schneider in a minute. Absolutely. Because that gives me $5 million to go sign a defenseman to keep the puck away from him in the first place. Well, I think that pretty much wraps up our preview of the Calgary Flames for this upcoming season. A lot of question marks in Calgary, and I don't see the playoffs in their future this year. What about you, Sean? They're, they're on the outside looking in, hey? I think they're comfortable on the outside looking in, and I think they're one injury on that defensive core or a declining Mick Kiprasov season from finding themselves looking at the watery balls while they stand on their bar in uh, early June. And that's all the time we have. Sean, thank you for joining me tonight. I'm your host, Brendan Monroe, and that concludes our Calgary Flames preview show. You've been listening to Hockey by Northwest. Join us next time.